All right, hello everyone. Uh, we are here today speaking with uh, Ricardo uh, Padovani, um, a GitLab hero and HackerOne ranked number seven hacker, uh, security researcher. Um, and uh, we're very excited to have him um, today uh, to just talk about all things bug bounty research, talk about his interactions with GitLab and uh, learn a little bit about what goes into being a security researcher um, for GitLab. So, Ricardo, very nice to meet you. Welcome. Thanks for inviting me. I'm super happy to be here and it will be great to talk with you in the next half an hour or so. Excellent, excellent. Before we uh, jump into some questions, I wanted to, uh, to really quickly ask you, uh, in your blog you mentioned uh, the first experience you had with GitLab was far from ideal, uh, but after that first report, you started reporting more and GitLab has significantly improved its program. Um, can you, can you tell us a little bit about what that looks like? And then we'll, uh, then we'll dive into the, uh, to the agenda. Yeah. Uh, well, um, then the fact is I've contributed to GitLab for years and I think I signed it up in January of 14. So a lot of times ago and GitLab community has always been very welcomed and um, the, the, you have some open source uh, or advocates that help community uh, being up to speed with GitLab development. And a couple of years ago, I think you started the Decker One program and at uh, the, begin, the beginning, I think it wasn't up to the level of the neck, uh, the the rest of GitLab, so probably it's still the first days uh, uh, there weren't uh, there wasn't much communication with uh, researchers. Uh, probably you will be you 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 were a bit overwhelmed by all the reports and so on. I think, and um, with time I've seen that you put uh, in act a lot of aut uh, automatization, and nowadays uh, you you reply to new reports in. I think a couple of days uh, after the first automatic uh, response. So um, yeah, uh, it, it has improved a lot. And nowadays I think it's quite easy and it's a pleasant experience uh, talking to you over Acker One uh, as it is for contributing to GitLab in general. Excellent. Well, certainly uh, your efforts have helped us uh, improve it. Um, with uh, the 27 total um, reports that you've sent to us. So thank you. Thank you very much for that. We appreciate your efforts. Um, great, well, let's jump right into the, uh, to the agenda and questions. Uh, Jorn, you have the, uh, the very first one. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Ricardo, for, for doing this AMA. So my first question would be, um, when, I, when I had a look at your Hacker One profile before this AMA, I figured that GitLab is pretty much the only bug bounty program you at least publicly participate in. So how comes that? And are we such an easy target to, to hack? Uh, thanks for the question. That is indeed a, a, a very good question. Um, well, no, you're not an easy target, definitely not. Um, also, since you have this very good policy nowadays uh, and the team has, has grown a lot, it is becoming harder and harder at finding something interesting on GitLab. Um, but the point is I'm not a security researcher full time. So uh, I'm a solutions architect and I love my daily job. I do bug bounties in my free time. Uh, actually, the first issue I found was on Facebook and not, not on GitLab. So, so you know that I, I do not aim only to GitLab. Um, but I think that for being successful as a security researcher, you have to know very well your target. Uh, usually you spend a lot of time doing recognition and trying to understand how the target works. And um, it's not something for me. I, I'm, <laughs> I, I get bored really fast uh, trying to uh, learn a new, new projects or new programs I, I do not usually work with. While on another end, I've contributed to GitLab and uh, in my daily job, we use GitLab mm almost every hour. So I know GitLab very well. I follow its development. I follow all the news and so on. So um, when I have some free time and I want to do some bug bounties, I, have, uh, I, have, I already know my target and I can uh, jump straight in in trying to hack it. Um, so this is why you see a lot of 
um, vulnerabilities report about uh, um, GitLab. Um, I've also done some report outside GitLab, but again, especially against things I use daily. So I don't know, some cloud providers or HackerOne uh, itself, uh, but they are not public, unfortunately. I hope I respond, I replied in fully to your question. <laughs> Just perfect, thanks. Uh, I think next question is James. Hi, Ricardo. Thanks for taking the time to answer all of our questions. Uh, my question is, is there anything you'd like to see about our, our see change about our current bug bounty program or policy? Um, thanks for the question and thanks for having uh, worked this hard with Akerwan. I think you have replied to a lot of my efforts actually from since since the beginning. Um, so I'm I really appreciate that the Akerwan the GitLab program over Aker Aker one nowadays. Um, I think you can have probably some swag. Um, that is branded by GitLab security or GitLab Hacker One, something like that. Um, at least for me, like for for some kind of bugs, since it's not my main fun, main uh, source of income, I would be happier about uh, 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 some special gift instead of just a little amount of money because it's not so important for me, of course. Uh, I could understand that for a lot of people that do this for work, the, the money revenue is more important. So I would leave it as an option for, uh, for, for, for the researcher. Another small thing, uh, I know that nowadays you offer a GitLab Ultimate uh, um, license, that is super, um, but it's only for self-hosted installation. And I don't find it so useful because uh, then you have to generate all the data for yourself. So one thing I usually target while I try to do some bug bounties is my work um, group. So we have a lot of real data and um, that, I mean, I, I suppose uh, targeting gitlab.com is a bit easier because there is already a lot of data you can access to while if you have your own instance. Uh, generating, since there are a lot of features, it's super hard using all of them or generating real data for all of them, especially because I think a lot of um, programs are, uh, or a lot of users of the features um, are about uh, interaction between different groups or different uh, reports. I mean, how my colleagues use GitLab is not something I would imagine you can use GitLab for. So uh, it's a kind of real data that is quite useful. Of, or maybe you can create some on a pot where every researcher can try and duck it so we could together generate new data and so on. A lot of good ideas. Thank you, Ricardo. Um, next is uh, Andrew. Hey, Ricardo, it's nice to meet you. Um, it's always been great to work with you on HackerOne. Uh, my question is, uh, what kinds of vulnerabilities do you most enjoy looking for and finding? Yeah, um, I'm really have a lot of fun about access control or in general about uh, kind of vulnerabilities that are um, uh, where you abuse an existing system to do something that wasn't uh, thought about. So, I mean, there are a lot of vulnerabilities that everybody knows that they are bad and like an XSS or an SQLI injection and they are error in the programmation or uh, nowadays they are, they are a bit rare on GitLab since you have a very good DevOps sec cycle. So uh, all the automatic system catch them. Um, I prefer thinking about maybe logical errors. So you implemented a new feature and there is a side effect that chain with another side effect of another feature is exploitable. And so it's like a riddle or a puzzle. And this is the kind of issue I enjoy um, most uh, uh, looking for. Wonderful, thanks for your answer. Uh, oh, Florence, go ahead. Dominic, uh, looks like you have the uh, the next question. Yeah, uh, hello, Ricardo. Uh, I was wondering, let's say you're planning to hack GitLab this weekend. You have a free weekend, nothing else planned. Well, how do you start? What do you do? How do, how do you target GitLab? 
Uh, that's an interesting question. Um, so uh, mainly um, there are different things I can do. So um, one thing usually is catching up with all the latest changes uh, you have deployed or latest feature have been um, presented. And for this is very useful uh, your blog since the 23th of the month, you deployed a new version and you have a long blog post with all the new feature. You, I can play um, with. <laughs> so like now, uh, these last two months, I've took a look to the um, iteration. So now you can collect issue by iterations. Um, it's a very useful feature. So we already use it uh, um, during my, my job. Uh, we use uh, for planning sprints. Um, so I've taken a look if for any reason, the feature itself or the API uh, behind it, like GraphQL or REST, uh, if they leak some data. I haven't found anything so far, but I suppose that is uh, because it has been implemented similar to the milestone, so uh, nothing very new. Um, then sometimes I take a look to, uh, to the source code. Uh, so um, maybe I search the most recent merged merge requests or just going around to some modules uh, in the GitLab code base. Um, and the other thing, I have a list of small uh, issues that are not like real vulnerabilities, just some issues or some strange behavior. And I try to chain them together or see if I can chain to something else uh, to find uh, an exploit. Cool, thanks. and. Kind of, it it was kind of answered. I also wondered like how you choose what, which part exactly you're going to dig into, but basically by reviewing the blogs. <laughs> yeah, cool. Or the Thanks. features I, I use most. Uh, like I've seen that um, some some report we have published is uh, the there are some issue I don't know in the package repository, but I don't use it so much. So um, I've never took the time to go uh, to, to, to try to hack it. So uh, again, it's more, it's more about what I already know, so I can think about way to break it. Um. Cool, thank you. Um, yeah, Lawrence. Thank you, Dominic. Uh, next question is uh, from Diraj. Do we have Diraj on the, uh, on the call today? Doesn't look okay. Uh, question is among all the bugs you found, what is your favorite or most interesting one? Huh. Um, so, well, I, I had a lot of fun last year with the Elasticsearch integration issues. Um, I, I think I reported six, uh, six issues in one month uh, and they were high in medium severity. So uh, that was fun. Um, but I think my favorite one was uh, uh, about uh, um, having access to, to some sub resource of a group uh, after you've been removed from the group. So again, a kind of issue that um, uh, is triggered by um, uh, well-known behavior but you have some side effect that you, you are not aware of. Like um, uh, if you move a, a group, a project from one group to another group, this project was able to access some private information that it shouldn't because it uh, inherited some of the permission from the previous group. So uh, we, have, we have a feature that is the moving projects around groups that is uh, a nice feature to have, but it had the side effect of uh, inheriting um, permission from the previous group. So you could explore these for assessing private information in the new group. Excellent, that's a cool one. That's a good one. Uh, Diraj has a couple more questions. Uh, next one here. Do you familiarize yourself with the code base before and during the hunt? Mm, uh, Sometimes, um, sometimes because, uh, well, the GitLab code base is huge. I mean, uh, loading it already, like I use RubyMine, loading it on my PC, that is a good PC, it still takes two, three minutes. And then jumping around uh, takes a lot of time, but sometimes it's useful. Um, I will, actually, there is one issue 
that I found just looking around that could be easy um, because uh, I had found one issue, it was confirmed, and then I took the time to understand what caused the issue. And I've seen that the function that was um, problematic was, call, was called for, from also other part of the code bases. And so I was able to, to, to find this new issue that wasn't duplicated because the fix you made wasn't in, like in the real problem, but was a bit uh, upper. So I was able to call the same function from another point of the code base and reproduce the same issue again. So uh, it's useful, <laughs> but uh, it's something that is very time consuming. So I don't do so often. Excellent. Uh, surely our code base is very, uh, very complicated and, uh, and that would be time consuming, but, but certainly useful for the hunt. Uh, and uh, one more question from Diraj, can you uh, expand on the tools that you use during your process? Yeah, indeed, we haven't talked about this yet. Um, so um, I'm not a pro. Uh, I've tried some of the tools that are suggested by the community. Probably the most known is uh, the Barb Suite. Um, but uh, I didn't click with it. Uh, of course, it's a complex project, so you need to take your time to learn it. I'm a bit lazy, so I jumped it. <laughs> I usually uh, use um, Firefox because the developer console of Firefox is very po powerful, especially the network uh, tab. So you can uh, edit uh, your request on the flight. You can uh, copy it as a cure. You can repeat them. So I use the, the console of Firefox a lot. And then I use um, Bash or so Curl especially for um, trying to reproduce the issue uh, outside the browser. So it's easier to, to uh, indeed, uh, for you guys to reproduce it and for me to understand if it's really an issue or is something that has been triggered by some strange cache or something on the browser that is, um, yeah, that is like not a proper issue. It's just something that has been cached in some strange ways. Good deal. Uh, I, uh, that's interesting. Your take on, on Burp Suite. I, I, I don't use Burp Suite on a, on a daily basis. And it does seem that every time I open it and spin it up, um, it's a brand new application and I have to go through a whole process of relearning again. So um, I understand that. Uh, next question is mine. Uh, what advice would you give to someone who's looking to get started in participating in a formal bug bounty program? Um, well, um, I think uh, you need first to know very, very well your target. So take your time, explore its features and um, take notes about uh, which features are um, interesting for you and so on. Um, then learn to, to uh, take note of what you're, what you are doing and learn to taking notes in an order manner. I think it's very important to have um, some place where you can just go and read what have you already done or some interesting found that you've done previously. Previously, Since you do not work or you do not talk altogether, but um, usually you go over days or different nights or maybe one month later you go back to a target. It's important to having well-written, well-ordered notes. And yeah, and it's not easy. So uh, don't uh, don't feel bad if you don't find anything at the beginning. Uh, it takes time. It takes a bit of luck as well. Uh, I, I think um, that especially if you read on Twitter, it seems that everyone finds super huge vulnerabilities, uh, super well paid, and so on. But as usual, who talks is like the top one percent so there is another 99 percent that does a lot of work and obtains um, less or not so much so uh persever go, go on continue on your on on your way um of course I, I could suggest to do not leave your daily job until you are very very good at doing this because it's not that you leave your job and bam you get one million the next month that's uh, that is great advice, especially the uh, the latter bit of that. <laughs> Thank you for that, uh, Ethan. You have the next question. So this is a little off topic from security, but as an everyday user of GitLab, what features do you like 
What features don't you like? And what is a feature you wish we had? Okay, um, so I really like uh, the the board issues. So um, how you can have an overview from the group. Uh, so in a group, you have multiple projects and you can collect all you or your issues in the same board and manage them is quite useful to organize your, your job. Um, I like also the wiki that uh, especially the fact that the wiki itself of a project is a Git repository itself. So it's easy to uh, clone the wiki and work offline on the wiki and then push it again. That's a great feature. I, I use it uh, quite often. Um, which features I would like to have that is missing? Mm, I'm not really sure. <laughs> I, uh, I'm trying to think if there is something I do outside of GitLab. Um, ah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. The the to do the to do list could be improved. I think at the moment you can only add to do from some of the elements and then you can, yeah, I don't know. It, the, I don't use the to-do list so much because uh, I feel it is a lot of noise and not very configurable, uh, but I'm not really sure how to improve it. So not a useful feedback. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, and I really like the, the, the thing that you're moving a lot of um, the DevOps cycle inside GitLab. So now you have this, Terraform image for managing Terraform and you can store the Terraform state inside GitLab. That for me is amazing. So well, we are a data science company. I have a lot of colleagues that are um, mathematicians or physicists. So very smart people, not very good maybe with computer. And with GitLab, I'm able to automatize their workflows so they're, they're able to work on the black magic math and being able to see the, the results in an automatic way. Um, I really like that. GitLab helps me a lot enabling my colleagues to do their work uh, as they should. Awesome, thank you. Who is up? Great. Greg. All right, yeah, thank you. So, I was wondering if you have any tips or suggestions on securing, locking down, hardening a self-hosted GitLab instance. So say we've set the root user password, what next? Um, enable multi-factor authentication, I suppose. <laughs> that always the first things you have to do. And I, I, I'm, I really suggest to do in all the accounts of your life that support multi-factor authentication. I think I have, I don't know, 20, 25 codes on my multi-factor authentication application. Um, I, I enjoyed the zero auth uh, um, approach to security. So I don't think uh, it's good to put behind a VPN or something like that. Um, I think uh, you should suggest your, your users to add uh, the SSH key every time to, to cloning instead of having a password. Um, I, I don't know if you have implemented in GitLab itself um, some integration with have I been pwned or something similar to avoid using the same password. Uh, I, I don't know if it has been already enabled, but some, it would be cool so people do not use passwords that have been already exposed. Um, and then it depends on where do you deploy. I mean, uh, uh, Keeping something secure over AWS is something totally different of keeping your on-premise uh, application secure. So a uh, lot of suggestions are, are also about how you manage, I don't know, your um, AIM role over AWS uh, or how you <laughs> properly back up your, <laughs> your things uh, if they're provisioned locally in your office. Great, thank Great. you. Thank you, thank you for that. Uh, Jonathan, you have the next question. I think it's my turn. Hey, Ricardo, thanks for being here. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, been, uh, I've been uh, um, excited uh, about you, about, about having you on, uh, on this AMA with us. Uh, I, before, we, uh, before I ask my question, I wanna, I wanna know, what do you do um, when you're not breaking GitLab, what do you do for fun? 
I'm sorry, when I'm not breaking GitLab. When you're not breaking GitLab, what do you do yeah. for fun? Uh, okay, so um, I live in Germany and having a beer with friends is the national sport here. So <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's one. Um, um, I, I like hiking. So I live in Munich, it's near the Alps. I like going on the lakes, on hiking. Um, yeah, friends and free time is, yeah, some something uh, not too complicated, just uh, hiking, climbing. <laughs> Sounds great. That's awesome. So my question for you then is, um, for the sake of time, I'm only going to ask one of the two. Um, but uh, what I'm most interested in is what do you do to stay on top of your field? Like, how do you stay educated on like the latest techniques and tactics around, um, you know, pen testing, red teaming, ap application security, those types of things? Uh, well, I'm not very good at that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Since it's not my mainly job, my main job, um, I usually uh, just uh, read the, the public reports on Hacker One. So sometimes if I have free time, I go on the home page of Hacker One and just read the reports to see maybe new techniques or to understand a new kind of uh, attacks. That is quite useful um, also for my daily job because, uh, again, you have to keep your infrastructure sa uh, safe. So last year, um, uh, there, were a, there were a lot of talking about uh, HTTP smuggling uh, with uh, the, the sync of proxy. So if you had a load balancer in front of your proxy, you can desync request. Uh, that was very interesting. And I learned about it on Hacker One when they first published the first report and paper around it. Um, then I use a bit of Twitter. Um, there are a lot of interesting people over there, a bit too much drama. So don't follow me on Twitter. I don't tweet much. I don't like the community very much on Twitter, but there are some people that are very interesting. And reading Hacker News, again, don't comment. I don't comment much, but um, I think there are a lot of interesting takes. Um, if you can stand all the, all the, um, not politics, but all the the trolling around and all the um, empty discussion, I think there are a lot of people that have a lot of time to write wall, wall of texts that are quite useless. But still, if you pick your your red, you can read interesting things. I love it. Thanks, Ricardo. Uh, Heather, you're up. Well, I see that we are almost at the end of time, but I just wanted to ask, what, what is the first computer that you owned, Ricardo? Uh, so my very first for just me was a Dell Inspiron 6000. So is that Dell laptop that you see a lot around in all the movies, the TV series and, and so on is a, Dell, a gray Dell with two white strips. Um, but before that, my father had some Dell attitude uh, back in the 90s, but um, I've not been a, 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 a magic kid with PCs. I've started picking up only at the beginning of high school, actually. Fantastic. Uh, I think we're good. I, I added one other question in there about if you had any questions for our team. Um, but I know that we are we are at the top of our our time here. Um, well, thanks for your time. I, I hope you enjoy running the Acker One program. Also, if I can imagine, there are I, I don't know there are a lot of um, low quality reports, or the the participant of the Acker One program are high quality. Excellent, uh, Ricardo. Thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate. Uh, you spending this time chatting with us. Uh, we really appreciate your efforts to help us secure GitLab. Um, certainly you are making a big impact um, here at GitLab and we appreciate that. Um, also for everyone else listening and watching, uh, check out uh, Ricardo's GitLab uh, profile. He has some really interesting projects um, going on in there. Um, if, uh, if some time uh, allows at a future point, Ricardo, I'd love to hear about some of these as well. <laughs> Thanks so much for inviting me. Uh, the questions have been very interesting. Um, feel free to contact me if you want. I mean, you can easily find uh, some email around the web to, to, to write me <laughs> if you want to talk about something else. Great. Uh, again, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Um, have a good rest of your, uh, your day.